Hi everybody, in today's video I will go through a complete flow on how to use Talent on your Google Cloud. This will be a fairly technical tutorial to show everything needed on how to connect your Talent to your Google Cloud and I will follow this end-to-end -end use case with ingesting data onto Google Storage, preparing the data and cleaning it, transforming it on Google Cloud using Dataproc and then writing the data for the purpose of performing analytics on Google BigQuery. The process we are building will help us take raw data. We will create talent jobs that will run on Google Dataproc using Spark and feed the data back to Google BigQuery. At this point, we can use SQL, standard SQL, to run queries on the clean data and we can use Google Data Studio to visualize the data. Throughout this video I will show you step by step all the setup that is necessary to run these jobs. First we will need to create a Google Cloud Storage, we will need to create a service account, then I will not be too specific but you will have to provide your own VPC and subnet for security purposes. Then we will define a data pro cluster which, will be, which we will start either with a script or with a talent component inside the job. Finally, we can run the Spark jobs and run queries on Google, BigQuery, and view the logs. First, we need to create a storage bucket on Google. Use the right region, make sure it's the region you want to use. Then we'll need to go to settings and create a key inside intero interoperability. Once we create a new key, keep this information stored so you can use it in the future. At this point, you can already use these credentials to upload the files onto your bucket. Place a Google storage connection put your access key in your secret and then use that connections to use Google Storage Put to copy a list of files or all the files to your bucket. Now we will create a service account. The service account will be used throughout the different jobs to authenticate against the diff diff different Google services. You will create a service account and you will need to assign specific roles so you will have enough permissions to run what you need to run. The first thing that we need is to make sure we can run Dataproc. For that you will need a role for a Dataproc worker. Second one we will need is for BigQuery. In this case I'm using a BigQuery admin permission. Now create a key, choose JSON and save the file to disk, we will use it later on. At this point I would recommend you will create your own VPC and subnet. This will depend mostly on the security requirements that you have. Depending on your security requirements, you will have to define the rules of the subnet and VPC and the firewall relating to that. That will also entail if you can run directly from your Talent Studio or in some cases if your security requires you will need to install a Talent Job Server on a node inside your network. Now if you followed all of the previous steps you are ready to create your Spark Data Pro cluster. You can create the following script using the information we've just collected. You will have a cluster name a bucket name, region, subnet, specific definition of the cluster size, the project name, your service account, and then additional properties that will make sure my yarn logs are persisted onto my bucket. With the script we've created, you can go ahead and run it in the Google Cloud shell. Click here and then paste the script. While you are running the script, the cluster will be created and then you can monitor the cluster from this page. If you wish to automate the start and stop of the script, you can use the tgoogledataproc manage 
the I component in talent. You will have to set up the same thing, provide the project identifier, the cluster identifier, the credential JSON file that we've created, and also the network setup in advanced settings. Then you can use this component to start and stop the cluster inside your flow. Now that my cluster is running, I can go ahead and design a Spark job to run on this DataPro cluster. The job I designed will read data from the Google Storage. So for this reason, first I have to connect to my Google Storage and it, here it's enough to give the bucket name. And in the end, it will write data to BigQuery. And for this reason, I've placed this BigQuery configuration component that requires, again, my bucket name and just the temp folder it can place files on and the location I'm running. It's very simple to get started with BigQuery. If you already created a service account, as I described earlier, all you need to do now is go to the Google Cloud Platform, go into BigQuery and create a new data set if you don't have one. Back to my Spark batch job. This is a very simple job that will take the raw data and will clean it, join it to additional files that I've placed earlier on the Google Storage, and then I will create two types of outputs. One will be the clean movies data that I want to use on BigQuery and another one, top 1000 movies as a text file on Google Storage. And for this reason, I need to configure my Spark job to run on the DataPro cluster. Using the same parameters that I've used to create the cluster in the script earlier, now I'm going to populate these parameters here. I choose Google Data Proc, the version that I want to run on, Yarn Client, and then I'll put the project cluster region. Uh, I will assign a, a specific folder inside my, my bucket to place my dependencies and the path for the service account where I will physically store the JSON files we've created earlier. For the purpose of being able to reconfigure in the future, I've used context, a context group for this. So all of my parameters are populated here. In the case of the dependencies bucket, it will be the full qualified bucket starting from GS with the name of bucket and the folder. Now I give it a run and, I, and the job runs on the cluster. In this case, it ran successfully, but whether or not it runs successfully or not, we can monitor what's going on with it on the cluster. And when I go into jobs, I can see that my last job ran successfully and the job name is here. Now, in case you want to go and look into your logs, and that's always something that eventually you will need to do. Uh, if you remember when we created the cluster, we gave it a property that will set that the logs will be persisted onto my bucket. So here I can find my latest job with the application ID and I can go ahead and download the logs. Since I load the data successfully into BigQuery, I can now browse my data in the Google Cloud Platform BigQuery. I can see I have my movies table. I also had two other tables that I ran earlier. And since the data is there, I can now start querying the data with SQL. And I can grade some of the movies on the on different scores. If I want to use some graphs and some visualizations, I can go ahead and click on Explore Data Explore in Data Studio. And then I can use the same data set directly to do some graphs and so on. And we are almost near the end. If you remember the purpose was to design a pipeline that will take the data, put it on a cloud platform raw and then prepare, transform, clean, and join all the data sources and make a conformed data set that can be used by an analyst or a data scientist with tools like BigQuery or looking at the files directly on the cloud. We have done this, but this is still not a repeatable process. In order to make it a repeatable process, I would like to be able to schedule this, uh, including the creation of the cluster, so I can save money when I'm not using it. For this purpose, we are going to create a talent normal DI job. We've seen this job before. It will upload the data to the Google Storage and then it will start the cluster with the exact same parameters as we started before. Basically the same functionality we did in the script. But now we would like to run a Spark job, the same one that we've created. 
And for this reason, we can drag and drop that Spark job that we've just created. And then once the cluster is already running, we can start this job. And then we can even close the job, shut down the cluster when the job is finished using the same cluster parameters that we've just created. This way we can assure that the cluster will only be running for the duration of the job and we will not have to pay for additional time, running time. So now I can publish my job to the cloud. I go to the talent managing console and I see that my job is there. I can decide either to run it once or I can schedule that job to run again and again on a daily or hourly basis from here. That's it for this time. Thank you for watching the tutorial.